into Milan, to Rome, and finally into exile in France. And for the last 13 years of his life, everywhere he went, he carried with him one painting. It was the portrait of a woman, and it was to become the most famous image in the history of art. A good painter has to bring out two things. The physical appearance of the subject he's painting, but also what is in the mind, the intentions of the soul. Achieving the first is easy, the second very hard. So what's the secret of her fascination? Why has this, of all the images in the world, gripped the imagination of so many people? for the past 500 years. Kings, emperors, and presidents have all paid their respects to her. On the Mona Lisa's American tour, President Kennedy greeted her as the ultimate symbol of Western civilization. We citizens of nations unborn at the time of its creation are among the inheritors and protectors of the ideals which gave it birth. For this painting is not only one of the towering achievements of the skill and the vision of art, but its creator embodied the central purpose of our civilization. She's been exploited and replicated in so many forms that it's easy to forget she was once a living, breathing person. Her image and expression caught in one moment of time and immortalized by the hand of the artist. This is how I think the Mona Lisa first looked when Leonardo painted it in 1503. It's a very cleaned up version of the picture that we're now familiar with. But to get to this, there have been a great deal of changes and stages involved in making this picture. I'll show you some of those stages. This is a board of poplar wood, and this is what the Mona Lisa was painted on. Now, everybody thinks people used canvas, but in those days they didn't, they painted on wood. In the south of Europe it was generally poplar wood, in the north of Europe it was generally oak. But it's this nice solid wood that became a masterpiece. Chalk drawing. Now almost certainly Leonardo would have done a chalk drawing or some kind of a, an image perhaps in pen or silver point or something to give an idea of the kind of look of the portrait, the feel of the portrait. The drawing would be transferred to the panel by a process called pricking and pouncing. The little lines would have been effectively joined up by some red, rather wet fluid paint. This will surprise you. With a green face, brown dress, blue background. What's happening here? Well, basically, Leonardo's just roughing in what goes where colour-wise. And we're starting to rough in the warm flesh tones over the, the green, so it still comes through in some areas. But of course, the background and the sky now, the marvellous blue, deep, sort of ultramarine-type sky. Mona Lisa.